Hello. Try and get some audio cut on. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Well, as a couple of the regulars know, I mean, I'm going to have to explain this a few times as we get people joining us for the live stream. Um, <clears throat> uh, about, I don't know, eight, nine, when I stopped posting stuff um, was when my missus got diagnosed with cancer. Um, so I've been, obviously, family comes first. I've been piling all my time into looking after her. Um, but the good news is she's uh, all clear now. Um she had, uh, she had bowel cancer. They removed eight centimetres of her bowel. Um, so that's it. I can get back to posting stuff now. I've got so much footage to uh, edit down and get put out. But I just thought I'd do a live stream now just to let everyone know I'm okay. I hope you guys are all all right as well. Um, <clears throat> and here she is. Uh, this is I've searched the internet, and this is a world first. Uh, no one has ever done this with a 1-24 F. It's bloody huge. There's my hands, look. <laughs> Biggest model I've ever done. Oh, she's been positive throughout, mate. It's just uh, in in incredible how positive she's been throughout this. Um, you know, but that's our missus is for you. Uh, just like your missus, uh, B&D. She's uh, been a rock for you throughout all you've been going through. <coughs> So, yeah, um, I'm allowed back in my shed now. <laughs> yeah, thanks for that, Benton. It is just one of the worst things, though, um, when the one person in, well, <laughs> there's a few people I love in the world, you know, my kids and that, but uh, it's when the woman that you've been with for 30 plus years, my, it's getting on for 40 now, <laughs> uh, get something like that and you read all the horror stories that, you know, can't say it's 50-50 and all that stuff. But luckily she had a really good surgeon um, and did it all keyhole. She's not going to have to live the rest of her life with a colostomy bag. So that's that's just great news. I can't even remember the last video I posted, to be honest. I think it was something to do with this, and we we're just beginning uh, this mosquito build. Um, we're in the middle of spaghetti hell at the moment with uh, all the wiring because we've got a we've, we've got RC tail. Um, we've got RC flaps, RC flapperons, um, huge motors in the damn thing. So it's going to go really fast, or maybe even take up. I've just had a WhatsApp. Hang on. I bet it's one of you guys. Yeah, both are dangerous. Yeah, thanks for that, B&D. Anyway, I'm going to crack on working on this. Um, I'll post some proper videos as time goes by. Uh, hopefully this weekend um, there'll be a proper update on this. Before I paint her up, I want to give her a run out and uh, see if it actually will do anything. I'm hoping with all the control surfaces that I've put in and the much bigger motors, it, it, it stands a chance of at least getting some air. So forgive me if I don't type back or I'm, I'm quiet for a little while. I've got some soldering to do. Um, so there, just a quick update on the model. Um, I'll, I'll leave the camera running in case anyone else joins us. No, mate, this is twice as big. Let me let me get the other one out so I can show you. That's the one we did first time round. And as you can see, this next one's a lot, a lot bigger. 
this one failed because we didn't have any control of it. It just had motors in it, and I chucked it in the garden, and it crashed. <laughs> this one, twice as big, and we've got full control over it. The flaps are working for controlling it like that. Um, the flapperons here, these two either side, these to lower down to force air against the ground to give it lift. Uh, we've got working tail and tail wheel and working um, tail flaps as well on this. So altogether, there's two, four, six. There's seven servos in this, uh, two whacking great uh, motors. Uh, and the thing that it, it makes a screaming noise when it gets going. But I've been doing this bit by bit. I've been filming it all the way, but I've got to edit. I've, I've got to edit all that footage down into something proper. Um, yeah, so this thing is massive. 1 to 24 scale. It's almost a meter in wing, wing length. Uh, and again, it's, it's a one-shot deal, this. Once I get it all running and all plugged in, um, if it takes off, I've got no idea if it's going to land. <laughs> or how I'm going to land it, to be honest, because uh, I've never flown an, any aircraft before RC. So it's just going to be suck it and see. If it crashes, it crashes. I know I can fix it up again. Um, I've got to worry about the, un the the undercarriage as well collapsing because the original, the original undercarriage was just plastic and I've reinforced all the legs on it uh, with aluminium. So there's aluminium poles running down inside these plastic molded legs with it being an airfix, it was never designed to fly. It's a really heavy plastic model anyway. And I've added batteries and servos and motors to it. So uh, there's, <laughs> we have no idea. Yeah, that's right, v &D, the hedge diver. <laughs> this one, this ain't going to be a hedge diver. Um, I've replaced all the weak parts on it, and it's got full control. So there's no, realistically, there's no reason for it not to get some air apart from it being too heavy and it will be a world first no one's ever managed to get and i've searched youtube no one's ever managed to get a plastic model kit that wasn't meant to fly to fly and there aren't even that many that uh taxi or have the kind of control that i put into it definitely a world first as having uh working flaps flapper ons tail uh, and all that stuff so we're on to a world first guys Um, let's get some lights on for you. Uh, forgive me if I shut up for a while. I'm just going to solder up some lights and uh, get all the lights on because uh, they look mint. <laughs> oh, it's got lights as well. Didn't tell you, it's got lights. We've got landing lights here. We've got navigation lights here. There's a navigation light on the tail and there's two red lights in the cockpit. And uh, I've painted up the guys in the cockpit who I've yet to name. Um, probably give them some names of you guys in the chat. <laughs> That was bad Chad getting on anyway. I still pop in every now and again when I get time. Um, still waiting for him to finish that bloody Bugatti, to be fair. Hello to the people just joined us. We're just giving a, an update where I've been for the last uh, eight months or so. Um, to cut a long story short, uh, my missus got cancer about eight, eight months ago, so I've been looking after doing all I can for her um, within reason. <laughs> But she's had the all clear now, so I can I can get back online. I think I'm going to say that a few times while I'm doing this. Right. I'll keep chatting and, uh, well, I'll try to keep chatting and soldering at the same time. I wish I could get a two-camera system going on, so I'll show you two parts of what I'm up to. I don't know. I'll have to look into how they do it. Um, on other, other people's channels. All right. What was I working on? Red light. Where have we gone?
All right, the jag engine was bad. Yeah, I saw I, I saw up to that bit. So we still not find the found the proper engine for it. That what a shame about the jag engine. Oh, another thing I've been working on. I've, been, I've masked up the cockpit glass, ready to go in. Uh, I took my time over this because I want it to look right. So the next next gig there is to uh, paint it up the actual colour of the model. We'll be doing this in Polish colours. Um, I think I've explained before one of the little known facts about World War II and the Battle of Britain. Uh, everyone knows that the, uh, the Polish pilots flew Spitfires and Hurricanes. What a lot of people don't know is they also had one of the most successful uh, Mosquito squadrons. Um, so a little homage to our Polish friends. And also a little warning to Russia in case they have a go at the Poles. Just a bit of quiet while I'm soldering. Um, changed my job again. I've moved from that Hotel de Vin place that I was at to uh, back to the Marriott when my wife got cancer. And I couldn't realistically do that job, uh, being the only man there on maintenance and also look after the missus because there was too much late night call outs and stuff like that. So back to the Marriott where they've got a team and at least I can get some time. I had some time to look after the wife um, and I could I could take time off whenever needed. And that's uh, that's saying something to the Marriott, really, for allowing that. So, big up the Marriott. Go. One wire on, next up. Yeah, and it's been, I think, uh, there's a lot to be said for being back amongst friends uh, where you work. I mean, I spent, I don't know, what, five years at, at the Marriott before I, I moved after the lockdown. I think a lot of people changed jobs after the, after lockdown happened because um, it showed them a, a different way of life. You know, you don't have to slog your guts out all the time. And it showed good companies and bad companies. And it's a good team at the Marriott. I like it. So if you guys are ever uh, travelling or come to York, give me a shout out and uh, I'll see what I can do for get some good rates at the hotel. And also, it's got a swimming pool, which which means we'll be we'll be launching that S one hundred at some point, which we never got around to launch.
be with you in a minute. I'm just soldering another wire. Oh, come on. Gotcha. Right, heat shrink. Right, yeah. Little bit of heat shrink. There we go. So these little red lights we're putting in for the cockpit, I'm putting two in so it's nice and bright. Because um, I think I want it to look really cool. So a world first baby flying airfix 124. Also a good excuse to buy some new uh, radio gear for this. Another little thing I found about what welding plastic is, once you've, because uh, a lot of welded plastic on here, I've welded lots of joints in and lots of brackets and stuff like that, um, just like melting it in with a, with a soldering iron, is that the plastic does go very, very brittle once you've melted it once. Um, so you have, and I, I discovered through adjusting the temperature, you don't, you've got to get it at the exact melting point of the, the plastic and, and not hotter to keep it nice and uh, flexible so there's a little tip for you ah oh, some number there we go resolder you on too much heat on the heat shrink and I've just uh, managed to unsolder the soldering Because I'm rushing. Okay, got you on. Where's my blue stuff gone? There she is. I'll be on bad chat as well later with, with you guys. About time I showed my face in there. Nicely. Get you put in. Get you in that slot there. A little bit of super glue. Where are you? If you remember from before when I was posting, I was forever spilling the super glue. Does it? Hey, Patrick. Great to see you joining us. Sorry I didn't answer your... Uh, I know you tried to ring me the other the other week there, but I just get lost in all, all my WhatsApps and stuff. So I accept my apologies. I'm not the best at keeping in touch. And I've, I've been explaining to everyone as they join us what's been going on. So I need a dipper for my super glue. I need a dipper. There we go. And I've just taken the... Uh, with these resistors, with these LEDs that I've got, these tiny, tiny LEDs, there's usually an inline resistor with them, and I've taken that out, so remind me to put it back in. There we go. That's you in. Don't spill the super glue. 
because you'll know I'm very good at that. Right. So I need to thread that. I need to thread you. Take you down the left side. Just rigging up the cockpit lights for this right now. Um, if you wonder what we're up to, then just uh, wind back on the on the video. You'll, you'll soon catch up. Kidoki. God, all this wiring, it's almost like the real thing. <laughs> So quick catch up. This is the Airfix 1 to 24 scale de Havilland Mosquito. That's twice as big as the other one that we did. And this has got full control. Full flap control, full flapper on control, full tail flaps and full rudder control. As well as whacking great motors. Uh, towards the end of this stream, uh, in about half an hour I guess, uh, I'll be rigging this up so you can see the motors going and you can see the flaps going and you can see the tail in full flow. I'm just happy to be back online, mate. I've been wondering what to do. I've got so much f footage to edit um, of the build of this. That's probably going to be boring as hell, but the exciting bit is when we get it to taxi, run along the ground, uh, the lights, and possibly even at full speed, it might get some air. I, I, I'm just hoping. But it is a world first. No one's ever done this with an Airfix 1 to 24 before. No one's gone this far. No one's been mental enough to go this far. <laughs> but that's us. <laughs> the mental gang. Oh, by the way, when the uh, S100, when we launch it at the pool, at the hotel, definitely going to happen in the next couple of weeks. I've got permission from the boss at the hotel to use the pool after hours. So after 11 p.m., I think the pool shuts. So I'll be there at midnight, lights down low, get the S100 out. Um, has anyone heard from uh, Lindsay, by the way, that Lindsay Allison Westhaven? Has she been back, back to bad chance at all? If anyone remembers, it's one of the early gang from, from the channel. Really? Because she bought she bought me a load of coffees on that um, that coffee app thing, um, and she said just spend it on on whatever I wanted. So part of that money went towards this, uh, and I was going to uh, put a name on the boat or the initials L A W. As well as you guys, just just on the rear end, I was going to put all the names of the all the people who were first on the channel. Did she know? Oh, okay. Still, I'm still going to get your names on the back of the boat. I wonder. Can I'm just going to move the camera? Don't panic. I don't know if you can see. There's the box for the S100. She's waiting, mate. <laughs> uh, and that's the box for the... Uh, well, you can see the size of the goddamn box. It is massive. And back to the workbench, which is an absolute hysterical mess. Come on. Can't get the camera locked in now. There we go. So I've just got another one of these to solder up. Just give me a sec. 
Um, how am I going to do that? So I've just got to work out a channel for the wiring to go. I think I'm going to drill a hole just there for this to go through. Three mil or two mil, where are you? Two mil will do. Just drill a small pilot hole. Thing is, every time I drill something on this, I break something. So, slowly does it. Come on. Oh, I've got to show you as well. My adventure with uh, micro taps and dies. I don't know if you can... Uh, yeah, this is going to be difficult for you to see, but we'll have a go. Um, where's the die? I can't find the die plate. Here we go. <laughs> Check this out. Hang on. That's the die bit, and it goes down to 0.2 of a millimetre. I think it's 0.2. Sorry, 0.7 of a millimetre. And I've snapped all of them <laughs> up to one mil. Tiny, tiny taps and dies. Because I've tried not to glue the wing. I don't know if you can see the, the little tiny one mil screws that I've used to put the wings together. So instead of gluing it, I've screwed it together just in case I need to adjust anything. Um, once I know everything's working properly, then, we can, then I can start gluing it making it a bit stronger but right now it, it feels quite strong with the you know tapping out all them one mil holes um into plastic and obviously remembering not to go too tight on the screws it will just it'll just cross thread itself just straight away so that's that i need to make it two mil now Right, come on. Gotcha. And before I forget, I need to put the resistor back on the red line. So we'll have you on there. Uh, there's the resistor. Thank you very much. You there. Right. Resist it onto the red line. So I'll snip you there. Proper snippers, where are you? There we go. Okay, just need to solder these up. Be back in a sec. God damn it. <laughs> if I leave the soldering iron too long, it turns itself off. Okay, you hot enough? Good man. Right. Oopsie doopsie. Stay put.
Right. You stay there. Soldering iron. Come with me. Solder. What you do with you? Okay, get the resistor on. Cool beans. Oopsie. Cool. Let's get some shrink on it. A little bit of left here. Too small, need bigger. Bigger. Gonna do a light test in a minute and then get the propellers all going. Right now it's just sorting out the wiring. Okay, you done. I'm gonna do my red. Okay. Get you in down here. Okay. Uh, super glue. Dibby dab. Too much. Give him that. Don't give it a much. Oopsie doopsie. Stay. You put in position. Do you know, I shouldn't really be super gluing at this stage. But I'm eager to get this done, so so much time without posting, and I've got so much to do now. I guess the exciting bit's going to be when it, it gets running. Um, I'll post all the boring bits as well, the actual build process and what we've done to get to this stage. And this stage is what I would call very close to... Uh, getting a running and another good bit's going to be we need that hole bigger we need to go three mil god damn it okay giant hole coming up there we go Come on. Gotcha. Okay. Here's that. Can I go on the side? No, I can't. Come on. I try to thread a needle. <laughs> okay. Right. I need to join these up somewhere around here. 
Yeah, so let's chop you up. That. Careful. Good shit. Okay. Black to black. Obviously, it's LED, so it's DC current. DC voltage, sorry. Oh, come on. And the LEDs I'm using are rated for 12 volts, but I'll only be running seven through them so they don't get too warm. Because the plastic on this model is very, very soft and uh, it won't tolerate too much heat. But that's airfix for you. When I first got this kit, I thought, you know, it didn't it didn't strike me as being the greatest of quality, but as I've put it together, the actual fit on it is really, really good. There's only a couple of bits that are out. Uh, the proportions of the landing gear are completely wrong. Um, if this landing gear was ever to fold back or retract, it wouldn't simply wouldn't fit because the the original wheels that came with it just too big. So I think they've definitely got some of the proportions wrong on this. Um, solder, soldering iron, still on, flat. I've got to watch I don't drop any solder onto the detailed parts of the model. It's going to melt it straight away. Um, it's a matter of looking out and being careful. So I want to do with my red and my black. There we go. Come on, so let's get you. I always tin the ends of the wire before I solder. Tinning just means you're putting a little bit of solder, melting some solder on the wires ready to go together for when you flash, flash solder it, to, solder it all. Makes for a good quick joint. Don't you turned off again? No, okay. Okay, stay still. Cool. See, if, if I wasn't doing this on camera and everything, everything held together with uh, helping hands, but there we go. Just have to be careful. Um, some more heat shrink. I've also got in the habit of using this clear heat shrink because you can always see your joints underneath. So if you're trying to fault find, see where something's broken, you can always see the kind of joint that you've got. Perfect. And I did another one here.
one of the things that's going to make this model really heavy. I've got heavy. I've got two sets of batteries going in it, um, because I don't know exactly how long one battery will last. So I'll start with two. If we have no joy getting her to take off, then uh, right, let's get all my lighting cables together. So at least we can show you some progress um, that the lights all work. Let me get all these cables out. Cable hell. Thought I'd sold a drama USB then. Right, okay. Can't. Right. All the big thick cables you can see, they're all the control cables for the uh, servos that we've got on here. Um, that's a red. Let's get all the reds together first, I think. Oh, that's soldered together. Why is that soldered together? Oh, it's a tail light. Cool. Let's get you uh, desoldered. There we go. Yeah, when I was, I had to thread the the tail light right the way through the fuselage for the tail so here using a wire and uh, the only way i could figure out how to do it was to solder both the wires together and then solder it to the bit of brass brass rod that i was using um usually i'd just tape it to the end but it, it just wouldn't have it so let's get all the reds together Obviously, I've got to get all the switch gear in as well for this. So it's going to be a tight fit in this fuselage. And all of the weight of the batteries are going to be in there. Um, I've got all the reds. Yeah, got all the reds. Just that one to go. Get the trim out. All the weight of the batteries to go in there. Um, and realistically, that's where all the bombs would have gone on the plane anyway. So that's where most of the weight is. Um, the two huge motors I've got in the engine bay cells should also add to the balance of it. Now, I've already balanced it, and the weight is more or less, and I say more or less, um, forward of the cockpit, exactly where it should be, because uh, one, one of the guys who I follow on, on YouTube, uh, Hambini, he's an aero engineer, and, and he said, just keep your weight forward of the, or, or a quarter back on the wing, same as... Um, old sparky on his channel um he said the same thing so that's what i'm trying to do keep the weight a quarter of the way back to the wing or its center of balance that's where it should be a quarter of the way back i hope i've understood that right because uh, if i haven't it's all going to go pear-shaped okay let's get, uh, let's get some crocodiles for the lights what did I put what did I do with you? Oh, the battery pack? There we go. Okay. So turn those lights off. Well, at least you're still with us, Pat. Every time I wake, I wake up on the morning these days, I think, hey, glad to be alive. There's always a bonus. Just keep positive, Pat. That's it. That's what got my missus through uh, the cancer. So positive attitude. Well, positive attitude and, and good doctors. Right. Ho, ho, ho. And we have light, boys and girls. Um, I don't think you can see the nav lights let's get the nav lights there but let's turn the lights off in the uh, in the hoose right so i've got green nav light got landing lights oopsie uh red one there don't know if you can see that these are properly bright and you can just about see the tail light 
Now, the mosquito, I'm, so I'm going to get picked up on this if people watch this live stream back, because the mosquito didn't actually have a tail light. It had an infrared light that the uh, Royal Navy and the Air Force played with for uh, just locating their own planes uh, so that the Germans couldn't see him. But, you know, I want a light on the tail, so I'll put a light on the tail. Now, if I can turn this over bloody carefully. Man, this weighs a ton. Okay, this is where disaster could strike, so everybody stand by to laugh. Oh, come on. Is she over? She's over. That's her first flip, and that's the red lights in the cockpit. I don't know if you can see that. So, meow. Sorry, I couldn't help myself. So, I tell you what, let's uh, rig the motors up. And see if we've got any joy there. So, that's the lights. Put you down there. Without causing a short. Right, that's the RC unit. So, let me get all my plugs put in. Six. Sorry, guys, I need some light for this. I'm going to put my lights back on. Right, number six. Where are you? Channel six. Let's see, you want five first. Five. Five. Come here. I am. I feel like I'm talking to myself, but I know there's people listening. <laughs> so, uh, thing is, I've already set the uh, ailerons and the flaps and things where they should be. So, if I get this wrong, all the servos are going to be grinding. And I'll put it on. So, I've got to take my time and get this plugged in correctly. Or we could have fire. That's never a good thing. Right, channel one and two. I want two. Where are you? Channel two. Quite yet. Oh, this is a man. For, I tell you, for a, a grown man, this is awfully fiddly stuff. Awfully, awfully, awfully fiddly. Right. That's all on. I need batteries now. There's one. Oh, what have I done with my other battery? Bit of Scottish coming in there. Did you hear that? <laughs> what have I done with my battery? That's for bold and dangerous. Have you still got your Zoom, uh, B&D? Okay, stand by for flames and bangs and stuff when I plug my batteries in. Oh. Oh. It's telling me off. Because I haven't plugged in the other set of batteries. Okay. Oh, uh, come on. Stop beeping at me. Don't like it when you beep at me. Stop beeping. Right. Okay. Right, nothing in the way of the props. Okay. Okay. As you can see with the tail, I've got the wrong setting on. So I'll have to flip that over and readjust the tail. Um, in fact, no, I can do that here. So that's the tail. Oopsie doopsie. Let's 
so I need you there like that. I need you on there like that. So let's get the tail right. So as you can see, we've got full tail motion. We've got full flat motion. They need a bit of adjustment. I, I can trim them because as you can see, I don't know if you can hear the actual... That's a good way of thinking of it, actually, Patrick. <laughs> and as you can see, the wheel's turning there. Right, let's uh, get these motors going. I'm going to have to hang on to it because they are properly powerful. Okay, now, and realistically, if I get all this put together and the undercarriage put in and all the spaghetti put away, um, she's going to go like a rocket. She really is going to go like a rocket. Oh, that's a point. The flapper ones, I think I said correctly. Okay, we seem to have a problem with the flapper ones. Oh, no, they're fully down. Right, so the things that are going to give it the lift at takeoff are these things, these massive flapper ones. Because when the mosquito was fully laden anyway, it needed these huge flapper rods to generate downforce to get it off the ground. Same with uh, the tail flap as well. So with the tail flap fully down, and I can give it more on down, like so, with both of those down, the tail lift first, then the wing lift first. I've got, I've, I'm really, really confident about this, even though it's a really heavy model. I think if we get a good headwind, um, it's going to take off under its own steam without me having to throw it across the garden. <laughs> I wish I could show you, I wish I could like physically show you the power on these motors because this time around it's proper, proper RC aircraft motors uh, that we've got in this. Um, and the a, a really good American firm actually. Um, supplied me with the propellers for it. So these are proper RC propellers, whereas the ones that we used before were just the propellers from the kit, and they were completely wrong. Um, I think when Sparky watches this, he's going he's to laugh um, because he said it wouldn't work from the, from the get-go. So we've got full... Look at those ailerons. Go, man. <laughs> Right, that clicking you can hear is because I'm going too far on the servo and it's missing on the gear, so I'll have to adjust that. But they both come fully down. Um, the one thing that could trip us up before we even get into the air <coughs> is that I remember when I filed down these RC wheels, one was a bit smaller than the other, but we have got control of the tail, so I should be able to steer it. Um, so, just, uh, I'm really happy with this. <laughs> Especially the lights. The lights look so cool. Oh. Anyway, that's the update, guys. I'm glad to see you're all well. Um, I'm feeling really positive now with the wife all, all clear of the cancer. Uh, it's been a massive weight off of my mind. And I know all of it, a lot of us in the chat have got health problems and that. But the one thing I can take away from, from what I've been through over the last eight, eight months and what my missus has been through, I mean, I can't imagine what it's been like for her at all. But she kept positive throughout. You know, she didn't let any negativity near her. Um, and that's the thing. If your brain's being positive, I think it reflects on, on your general health, you know. Um, and it taught me a lesson not to be such a depressing git <laughs> at the end of the day. And uh, the big C is, uh, I think, one of the worst things you can possibly have.
So, guys, that's it. I promise you I will be posting more, keeping in contact more, he says. <laughs> I'm just hopeless answering WhatsApps. Um, this is a world's first. We're part of a world first. No one's ever done this before with a plastic kit. All singing, all dancing, with servos, with powerful motors. It will taxi, definitely taxi. We'll have it running around, around the car park at work, um, uh, and it will be soon. Uh, together with the S100, we're going to get there. Um, thanks for your support. Thanks for your constant nagging. <laughs> um, it's got me back online, and it's got me through this. Uh... Thank you, fellas. And I mean it. Thanks for your support. Do you know as well? I can't, I can't believe it. I haven't done anything online for eight months, and and the subscriber rate has still been going up. So, um, yeah, uh, I'm impressed. I think that's down to you guys, really. You must be mentioning me a lot in the chat on the other other uh, on Bad Chad. So I'll be in Bad Chad tonight, definitely. Uh, catch up with the guys, and good to see them again. All regulars. In case you missed the size comparison as well uh, from before, before I go. That's the one we threw across the garden. And basically, well, it's twice the size. It's 1 to 24. So this one's going to be a shelf queen now, if I ever get it finished. <laughs> I'm great at starting stuff, rubbish at finish, finishing stuff. Get my little Marriott sign in. There we go. <laughs> Might even get sponsorship off Marriott. You never know. Yeah, later, guys. Let's call it a halt there. Um, how long have we been going for? We've been going for over an hour now. Thanks for joining me. Um, I'll probably go live again over the weekend, actually, because I want to get the undercarriage done and uh, put all that wiring somehow into the model and give it a run out taxiing. Uh, then we can get all the glass work on. Um, I'll get some photos of the, the detail in the cockpit because the detail in the cockpit is just stunning. Uh, all the dials and, and and levers and buttons and stuff. Because at, at, at the end of the day, this is a... The actual kit, if you finish it, just as a normal static kit, it's museum quality. Um, but sadly, there's certain things I've had to do to this that make it not museum quality. <laughs> yeah, see you on Chad's, guys. I'll catch you later. Beautiful. Oh, don't you be doing that. Right. Battery is off. Really? Later, everyone. Bye.